All right. So that's like the second time I'm streaming uh, this year, actually. <laughs> I've just streamed yesterday, and now I just kind of felt like doing it, uh, doing it again. And today we're gonna fly to Paris, Charles de Gaulle Airport. Or Charles de Gaulle. I don't really know how to say. I think Charles de Gaulle is right. Uh, it's the right way to say. So I'm um, once again gonna upload this to YouTube after I'm done. And yeah. Alright, so, we can actually, uh, s start, I guess, everything's settled, uh, we are once again flying with the CRJ-700, I think it's a really nice airport, actually, uh, airplane, <laughs> sorry, actually, uh, as you can see, I, uh, kind of changed my setup, you can now see the chat on the right side of the screen, and also, there's still the exploit uh, watermark that I'll have to figure that out. It's kind of annoying, but not too much. So we're just uh, making the route back here. Now we have to. Well, we are already on the right frequency. So we can just uh, request the taxi IFR and I'm gonna pull up the stairs. Guessing the boarding is done at this point. Alright, so we're gonna acknowledge the tax clearance. We can change into yeah, that's strange view into first person. Uh, first person. All right, I'm just gonna look which yeah over there. All right, so we can make a pushback. Let's shift P, I think. It is. Alright, so we're pushing back. So I actually uh, figured out how my rudders worked again. Uh, I had a problem with the controls in the last stream, and I also overrun the runway when we landed in uh, Strasbourg because I had a problem with the controls and, like, kind of forgot to disengage the auto throttle, so. The engines were like running at full at full power. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're, f we're flying to Paris. Charles de Gaulle. I think it's the biggest airport down out there. There are like uh, three airports in Paris. So just gonna. Roll up a bit. Ah, oh, come on. Ah, oh, there it is. So, as I said, uh, I didn't or I haven't flown since last year, so I'm kind of just uh, I'm doing trying and uh, trial and error. It doesn't look that professional, but on the other hand, I'm not a professional at all, so 
I guess it isn't too bad. Like a uh, strange steering on the taxiway when taxiing to the runway. I'm really fighting with the rudders right now. Oh, come on. Uh, rudder pedals. Now, right. Trying to get straight onto this runway so we can. We don't have to uh, use the rudder pedals to match when taking off. And here we are. It was kind of a hard uh, break, but. I guess uh, the passengers won't mind. So, we're casting takeoff clearance out far from Burn Tower. It's actually, a, a, as you can see, uh, last year I've flown, on my streams I've flown from uh, Burn actually a lot. And now I'm doing that too because it's my home airport and I really like it. But the graphics are the scenery is really bad. So, just gonna apply the brakes, throttle up a bit, getting to 60, letting the brakes go, and full throttle. And I just Yeah, I'm doing a lot of errors right now because I just remembered that I should also pull up, uh, use the flaps, so I just uh, did that right now. And what did we say? 130 to rotate, rotate. That's kind of heavy, but we are in the air. So we are now. I'm actually gonna. Uh, put the ATC window over there so we have a better view didn't thought about that, sorry we have three viewers hello guys so if you just joined we are flying to uh, Paris Paris Charles de Gaulle airport from from Bern gear is up and Flaps are up. Just throttling back here a bit. Actually, climbing quite a bit. Now he will just start. I'm gonna engage the autopilot. And we got a heading. Ah, turn left. I'm gonna acknowledge that. Clear on five. Come on. There it is. And heading. So, alright, so autopilot is engaged. We are a bit slow. I'm guessing I'll also put on the auto throttle for about 300 knots. 320. Oh, that's too much. Come on. There it is. 320 and auto throttle engaged. So we are actually not. Are we climbing? Well, we are, but it's kind of slow, isn't it? Um, you didn't say anything else, we're just, we are the right heading, so, that should work. Guessing it's like, well the flaps are up, but we still have a lot of, um, lift. So that's why it's like flying 
horizontally but also climbing a lot which doesn't really make sense does it? <laughs> alright there we are um, we're gonna change radio to Geneva approach so guessing while we're uh, still flying here well, how fast are we flying? well yeah uh, Geneva approach. Oh, come on. Well, we're still climbing. We're just gonna be uh, switching from appro uh, approach or you know tower to tower. And then when we're high enough, yeah, here, here it is. Climb, maintain flight level one eight zero. Just gonna acknowledge that and. Put it in here. So when we're actually that low, does it start climbing? It does start climbing. All right. So when we're uh, actually that low, we just uh, change from tower to tower, and then when we're high enough, we'll just uh, be on the center frequency. So for Switzerland, that would be. Um, I think it's like all of Switzerland is Zurich Center, but I'm not really sure about it. But then, like, I know France has Paris Center, Marseille Center, and Bordeaux Center. But I think they also have Lyon Center. I'm not sure, too sure about that. So, as you can see, we're just, um, yeah, flying to the northwest and are about to cross the border west of La Segura actually kind of uh, west of uh, Basel and there we are, he actually gives us Basel approach We're climbing very, very, uh, very, very slow. I'm gonna look what I can do. That doesn't seem right. Whoa! I was, it was just climbing with like 800, uh, 800 feet per second, uh, per minute, or something, and then it just jumped to 400. That's strange. Ah, there it is. Uh, so Switzerland also has two center frequencies. One is Zurich Center and the other one is Geneva Center, actually. So, yeah. We're changing to. Yeah, that's not Geneva Center. Uh, you sometimes have the problem with uh, FS6 that you're uh, kind of actually given a frequency, but then you fly out of the radius of that frequency. And then you have to tune on another frequency, which is uh, like a totally different one. And it's kind of confusing, but as long as we get to our. Uh, as long as we get to Paris, it. I don't mind really. It's just some little uh, errors that this flight simulator uh, has. Sometimes. So as you can see, I can put uh, inputs on the yoke, but the airplane doesn't react. It's very good. So yeah, for flying on autopilot. It's quite um, quite chill when you're when you could just cruise and have the autopilot engaged. <coughs> you don't have to worry about stuff. There's a traffic alert. Uh, that's not for us actually.
It's also quite interesting. I think uh, like a lot of Bombardier jets or Bombardier aircraft have a uh, hatch, like a, a ceiling hatch or I don't know how to call it, uh, in the in the cockpit. And there we are. So we just got um, advised to climb to our final flight level, which is um, flight level. Two zero zero, so twenty thousand feet, and we're climbing with. Just gonna look at this. One thousand five hundred feet per minute. Feet per minute. Oh, all right. No, I did not hear that. Two eight zero can do so. We're turning a bit more west. Oh, that actually looks really cool. I like. I really can't wait for the uh, new flight simulator to come out. It looks so amazing, like from what I've seen from the development videos and stuff. And I, I think it will be so cool. Be uh, also because it has like one of the first airliner uh, airliners you can have is the Airbus. Airbus uh, 320 Neo, I think it is. Yeah, that's. I think that's a really cool uh, plane. So. So we're heading back three, uh, three one zero. I don't really know why we make that. Uh, curve. So also, if you want to write something, I have a stream. Uh, write open next to me, so yeah, I can see your um, your messages, and also it will be shown on the stream itself. Just this little setup I did. Also, once again, you can uh, see the time down there on the clock. That isn't right at all. It's like two hours later. <laughs> so, yeah. Actually, also, be. Uh, for the background noise. It's kind of silent right now because, well, I at least think that the sound of the engines are enough to like fill the background. But if you guys want me to, I don't know, play music or something, I can um, look if I find something or at least, you know, do it in the next stream. I can actually, I think I can create a poll, can't I? Hold on. I'm just gonna... Uh, I'm just gonna do it on my... Wait, 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 hold on. On my phone it should work because I can't uh, click out of the... I can't click out of the game right now because there's like this strange setting that if I click out the uh, simulation just stops. But shouldn't I be able to... Oh. That's kind of dumb. Can I actually... 
Hold on. So, um, I'm just gonna click out of the game for a second. Sorry. And I, it's definitely silent, so. <laughs> but I can make. Uh. Oh, what's it called? Yeah. Wait, hold on. Mm, I'll be right back. Yeah, a ball, right. So also, uh, Alita, I just saw that you followed, uh, thank you very much. That's very nice. So, yeah. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> it's kind of a problem, like, if I want to do something, uh, set something up in the stream or something, I'll have to click out of the game, and then the game uh, or the simulation will stop and then I'll have to uh, manually actually activate it again so I'm gonna look that I can like uh, change the settings for the next stream wait hold on I just saw that we have another clock right over there this one's wrong too, so yeah, just don't trust the clocks in the CRT. All right, there we are. Um, actually, the new, uh, new advice from the ATC to turn left, heading two six two six five. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, just uh. I just did a stream yesterday, but I felt like flying again a bit, so I did another one. And so yes, uh, underneath the stream there should be the poll right now, so if you want to put that in, I'm gonna... Uh, if you would like background music or something, or if, you would, uh, if you think that would be a a uh, good idea I'm gonna do that in the next stream or just or I'll just let it be and guess uh, and I would yeah guess the engines and me talking stuff would be enough to kind of uh, you know fill out the sound so that it doesn't just feed uh, sounds quiet all the time. It's like I, I know really good uh, royalty free music, so if you would like that, I can do that in the next stream. Uh, turn right heading 3 super so we're actually once again heading back to our original course, or at least almost, with like uh, 10 degrees more left, uh, more to the west. Well yeah, left also. Um, it's actually, if we look on the map, I have no idea where we are. I'm just... I'm just gonna look on Google right now what the airport LF, a, uh, LFSU or a, is. <sighs> I'm kind of stuttering right now. Eh? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong. So. Alright. 
Blanche Longre Colimpon. Yeah, I'm not that good at pronouncing French stuff. So it might be wrong. It's like. Yeah, it's. Uh, we're actually almost halfway to Paris. We are 26 minutes into the stream, so I'm guessing we'll. Like. Um, yeah, like. The stream will go. Is it, uh, or will be an hour long or something? A bit more, I guess. So, yeah. It's actually quite sad that uh, you can't travel at the moment, you know, in the real world. But at least we have the simulations, so that's... It's, uh, it's quite nice to, like, fly around to destinations you would like to fly to. Or visit uh, interesting airports, like, uh, for example, I've flown a couple of times in the simulation, of course, uh, to Marseille Airport, which is like halfway built into a saltwater sea, and it's it looks quite interesting. It's also very big for it being kind of close to Paris. I mean, I would have guessed that Marseille has an airport, uh, but I wouldn't have guessed this is, uh, that it's like that big. So. Quite uh, it's quite calming just like to fly above the clouds and I just found uh, I just noticed that I actually set up the wrong weather because when I look outside it doesn't even have clouds or something it's just blue sky it's very nice weather to do something but you shouldn't do something hey uh, or you shouldn't do stuff because we should all, uh, you know, stay at home, social distancing and stuff. But hey, we have the virtual world and simulation, so we can still travel. To, Pari uh, to Paris, for example, right now. Alright, and we're actually getting handed over to Paris Center, and they're gonna uh, guide us until we're gonna be handed over to Charles de Gaulle Tower and then we'll land. <laughs> so yeah, I also thought about Also thought about playing uh, like not just uh, you know not just uh, simulator but also other games on this channel. So if you want to see that, you can uh, write it into the chat, or I guess if you're watching this on YouTube, you can write it into the comment section. There are some games I thought about playing. Just got a look. Uh, what's this called again? Mm -hmm. Wait. Yeah, I just. <laughs> I just forgot it kind of. Uh, oh, come on. I'm just searching for it. I wrote it down actually. Guess I'm gonna find it later. Or it actually should be lying around somewhere here. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna uh, like say later or something. I don't know. So yeah. Uh. 
Um, we are over the Seine right now. That's the river that actually flo flows through Paris. Um, a bit to the west of us. Well, I can't see it right now. So yeah, as I said in the last stream, I really like this airplane. It was uh, like with regional jets, I like them very much. And last year I've flown the Fokker 100 a bunch of times, I think. And it's kind of a similar aircraft, even though I think the, th uh, the Fokker is smaller. It also has that iconic air brake at the back of the plane. You know, at the tail, where it just splits the tail and then that's the airplane. Um, but yeah, I really, I really like uh, such regional jets. Canada Air. And the reason why I'm not flying the Fokker 100 actually is because I fl uh, I've said it in the last stream. Um, like it was some freeware I've downloaded online and I had it on my old PC and now I check you know I got a new PC it's actually quite a good one also and all the stuff is on my old PC and I th forgot about it and yeah I'll have to look maybe I'm just gonna transfer it over to the new one. So we're just changed the heading in the autopilot so it's doing a right uh, a left turn and then we're gonna head um, to 195 degrees. So pretty much actually we're gonna fly south west west That's kind of strange because we're actually turning away from Paris right now. But I'll just have to trust the ATC. We're probably flying around some kind of restricted uh, airspace or something. Yeah. But I guess he'll just uh, advise us to turn back soon because... Yeah, there it is. Turn right heading to uh, 72. Proceed on course. I don't know why he did that, but we're gonna turn back to 270 degrees and fly in the direction of the airport of uh, Paris. And actually, if I'm just uh, looking at this, we're uh, near LFOB, and I'm just gonna look where that is. Uh, Paris. Oh wait, what? That's actually a Paris airport. Are we that close yet? Doesn't make sense. Where is it? Hello. <clears throat> Doesn't show. Wait, come on. No, oh, that's the wrong airport. Alright, I'm gonna try LFGP, that's right south of it, you can, uh, you can actually see that on the map. 
Although there's like the big watermark of X split over it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to uh, buy the whole version of this of this uh, program so that it doesn't have to it doesn't have to watermarks all the time. Or does that actually say LFQB? I wouldn't be able to tell. But I'm gonna search for L LFGP. Saint Florent Chou Airport. Alright, I'm gonna look for it. Um. I'm gonna try another airport LFGO. Yeah, that works. All right. So that's the Pont sur Yon. Just going to look for it. Aerodrome de Pont sur Yon. And we're actually quite close to Paris. So I guess um, yeah, we're actually quite fast. Paris is. Probably like 100 km uh, kilometers north of us, yeah. So I guess we'll uh, start with the descent uh, in a few minutes. So Paris should be on our right, something over there. Uh, somewhere over there. That could actually be it, the big grey area you can see. But under the horizon under the horizon in the middle of the screen. Come on. So we're gonna acknowledge and turn right to three four five. Three hundred forty-five degrees. Oh, that's quite a bank. Very steep bank. So if you're drinking, like if you set down your cola and the autopilot makes such a turn, then yeah, in case you're gonna spill it. Ah, there it is. So we're actually descending right now. I'm gonna. Well, no, I'm just gonna acknowledge and then put in. 14,000. Wait, that's a little. Sorry, I just uh, looked at what he was talking about. So he wants. Uh, I'm gonna select another approach. Um, he wants us to go 8 right, so I want to do visual 8 right. Which will aid right because I don't really like flying. Uh, right. Well, I don't mind. Well, I guess I'll have to figure it out better to fly with ILS. And also, yeah, there it is. All right, we should the runway approach. So that means we won't fly with instruments, but we'll just do it manually. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 290, alright, alright, alright. There it is. Actually, gonna. Turn left thing 260. So, I'm actually gonna slow down a bit to. Yeah, 280 knots, why not? Sounds good. So, the autofoil is now gonna 
pull back to throttle uh, quadrant or throttle stick, you know. So the engines engines will um, produce less power, and then will just without even applying the brakes, will just naturally slow down. So, alright, someone said I should explain a bit of the mechanics in the cockpit. I'm gonna do that while he's talking to the other airplane. So, what we have here is our speed in. Yeah, we have our speed in uh, knots. Wait. I'm just kind of confused. Yeah, it's knots. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, knots and our altitude in feet. It's uh, the imperial system. It's like uh, what America uses, but it's kind of just happened that. Well, I think it was because America produced a lot of airplanes and they all had this imperial system, so other airplanes started using it too because everyone would like agree with it that it was the um, universal uh, system to use for airplanes. So here we have our compass, that's our heading, and that's our um, heading that it should fly. Uh, so the heading I put in to the autopilot. And it's actually turned automatically, it will turn automatically until we're to 295. So you can see we are to heading 290, and then it'll just slowly fly to the right until we're to 295. So here we have uh, some, you know, just some infos like how the engines are running and if our landing gear is up and secured and stuff. And also fuel, very, very important, and the flaps. So the flaps are, you know, this lever here, and they're gonna extend out of the wing and create a larger area so that the uh, air has a long way to go and they will produ produce more lift. So yeah, and of course the landing gear, that's that lever gear uh, for landing, so we have wheels, you know. Then on the co-pilot uh, co side it's like the same stuff. And here's one that's like a backup, um, oh yeah I didn't actually, this uh, blue and orange thing is the horizon, artificial horizon, so we have the normal horizon and then we have the artificial horizon, and it's just, yeah, it's actually just uh, showing in which kind of angle you're flying to the horizon, so we're actually flying a bit, or we have the nose a bit lower than the horizon. But we're still not descending because the winds create so much lift so that we don't uh, fly down. And also here is the for the climbing and descending. That's here it's gonna show how much feet per minute we're climbing or descending. And here's another compass. Alright, so we got the descent and maintain eight thousand feet. I'm gonna just put that in here, right? I should actually. Alright, never mind. I'm gonna put it here and then acknowledge. Yeah, oh, come on. And now he's gonna. There it is. Or else I'm gonna get in trouble like he's. Um, <laughs> practically screaming at me to repeat the transmission. Also, uh, this lever here, that's the spoiler, or you know, air brake. So that are... I can actually show it right now. If you look at the wing... Those are little flaps, or you know, little parts that extend out of the wing and disturb the airflow, and that will also help break the airplane. Actually, if you can see, there's like uh, 
it just uh, throttle up and then throttle back because I disturbed the airflow and made the airplane slower so the airplane automatically uh, wanted to go faster and put more power on the engines. So we just uh, changed frequency to Paris Center again. We were like on what, what were we at? Zen approach, yeah, that's totally wrong. So, uh, here are some uh, important. Well, we are. Alright, we're gonna be handed back to Zen approach, so I'm just gonna do that right now. Alright, so here are some uh, important warning lights. Uh, master warning and master caution is like a master warning is for bad stuff and you really have to look what's going on it's, uh, it will say it right to you what the problem is there will be like yellow text that will um, describe the problem a master caution is something similar but it's like not so bad you should do something against it but it's not gonna like uh, let the airplane f uh, fall from the sky so then we have stall that's if the airplane is too slow then it will actually uh, fall out of this fall out of the sky I'm kind of talking too fast and that makes me say words in a strange way I'm just mumbling you know so uh, because if there isn't enough airflow over the wings they don't produce lift and so the airplane will fall out of the sky because without lift it can't go you know it can't fly then we have to pull up and ground proximity alarm uh, alarm that's practically the same thing all right we gotta whew, we got to turn back hold on I'm just gonna put it in here that's practically practically the same thing Ground proximity means that you're just too low, you're too uh, near to the ground and then it's gonna say pull up so that I actually pull up on the stick here like this so the nose goes up so that uh, we will fly away or you know we'll climb and fly away from the ground. And then here's the autopilot. We have the engage button so that it activates the autopilot and then we have the different settings button so we have here the speed button I'm just gonna put that a bit back so that the autopilot or you know auto throttle that's the plane controls the throttle will go back to 250 knots so that will be a bit slower and I just have to look yeah, there's traffic, so I gotta say... Alright, so the uh, ATC just saw that we and this other plane are very close, so he asked both of us if we can see the other plane, so that we wouldn't collide if we, you know... So that we wouldn't collide if we would fly in, uh, into the same direction. So, so we're uh, actually about to land. We, we just got handed off to the approach, which is like the last uh, contact before we land. You're gonna guide us into land. So what I want to see, uh, want to say, here's the speed uh, button to set in or you know set up the speed, which speed we want to fly on, and that here is to acknowledge that so that it's gonna actually do that to hold, uh, will hold that speed. Then here's the same with the heading, so in which direction we're flying, and the same with the altitude, so on how high we're gonna fly. And also over here is how fast we're gonna climb or descend. So, yeah, I try to explain it uh, a bit right now. Also, there are a lot of uh, buttons for lights and turning off the engine, turning on the engine. Um, also, fuel uh, for the engines, fuel buttons so that we could cut the fuel if there's like a fire on the engine. Uh, radio and other things for navigation and communication. 
and also the um, computer. And now I gotta focus on actually landing this airplane because we just got asked to descend to 2400 feet and that's quite low so that means they want us to land so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out the flaps uh, two positions that's like so we're actually gonna see it here uh, so the flaps yeah uh, is that 8 degrees? 8 degrees yeah I can actually show you the flaps right now So those parts here actually extended out of the aircraft and made the wing larger. And also in front there's uh, something called, I think it's called slats or something, that also can make the wing bigger. And the airport should be on the right. Hold on. Yeah, I think. No, 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 that's the wrong airport. Where is it? Alright, I think it's back there. So. I think that's the airport. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Also, we should actually be able to see the Eiffel Tower. If I would know where it is. Hold on. Oh yeah, there it is. Can you see it? The Eiffel Tower. Very nice. It's like the scenery isn't so good, but it's like it also uh, it still has some some little details, and I think that's that's quite nice. So yeah. And now we can see that we are actually in Paris. <laughs> Oh hey, we got 5 viewers. So if you just joined, um, we're actually... Uh, we started from Bern in Switzerland, and we're flying to Charles de Gaulle Airport, which should be right back there. And now we're gonna turn right, heading... Whoa, 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 whoa. Heading to, uh, 325. Also, I, I'm in no way an expert. Alright, we're gonna head even further. I'm in no way an expert on, like, airplanes and stuff. So, I might say stuff that isn't right at all. So we got... Alright, uh, the goal approach, actually. And what is quite strange is we're flying over another airport, which you don't usually do because, like, there could be helicopters or other airplanes, so they could collide. But I guess they'll watch out for that for us. And we're actually also with 2,400 feet over the city. We are very, very close to the ground. Which I didn't really expect. I once flown to uh, I once have flown to London City in the simulation, you know, and it was a very steep approach. They had this like on five thousand feet all the time until I could actually see the airport and then had to make a steep approach into the airport. Also, if you have any questions or want to say something, I have the chat open right next to me, and it also will show it on the on the stream on the right side. I have to chat. Whew. Sorry, I'm kind of uh, out of breath because I just explained the whole cockpit. Oh yeah. Uh, also, uh, very, very. Um. Damn, I forgot the word. I can't believe it. Hold on. <laughs> Important! Dear God. You know, I, I sometimes even forget the, world, uh, the words in Swiss, German, and then also English is not. It's a foreign language. 
very important two clocks which are both wrong well actually this one yeah no it's it's very wrong <laughs> both clocks are wrong So yeah, I think that back there should be the airport actually. So we're very close. But I guess it's just because people want to have a look at the Eiffel Tower. Oh, it's Notre Dame back there. Also, very nice. And the Louvre, I think. And like, other French stuff. Which I don't know the names of, but I know they ah Arc de Triomphe. Yeah, it has it has some uh, very nice details actually in the cities. Kind of a city feeling back there with some big big buildings. All right, so we gotta turn to the right. <sighs> Come on. It's all the time if we want to say something like. Yeah, alright, I'm gonna. Always when I want to say something or want to acknowledge like an instruction. There's another airplane or another ATC talking into the frequency. Well, actually, I can't blame them because Paris is normally very. Um, a very stressful airspace to fly into. There are a lot of airplanes. And there are like three big airports and six smaller ones or something. It's whew, way too much airplanes, way too much airports. It's really, if, if you think about how many airplanes actually fly around this part or anywhere. It's a miracle that mid-air collisions or something happen so rarely, actually. So, yeah. So yeah, once again, if you want to say something, I have to chat up right next to me. We're just floating over Paris. And approaching the airport, which is like back there, I think. And there's another airport here, like, those are two airports, I wouldn't even, like, not 20 km kilometers um, distance between the two, and they're both pretty big. Why does one city need so many airports? Airport is at 1 o'clock, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're actually a launch instruction. Uh, eight five, right? Um, eight right. Wait, hold on. So yeah, that's the right airport. I kind of got mixed up. We're gonna uh, put out the landing gear right here and I'm gonna disengage the autopilot and also the auto throttle stuff. 
and now I am in control. Also with the throttle this time, which to the giant right now. Is. So we're actually flying wrong, and we're again a bit too high. It's it's a nice view. Uh, I think we'll go. We're gonna make it. Also, because I'm not going to leave the engines at full power this time, like I did in my last stream. So very carefully, just approaching. Now I have full flaps. So as you can see, those extended out pretty. Uh, yeah, pretty much, or quite a bit, and they're gonna give us more lift so they can fly slower, but I guess we're still a bit too slow, I'm gonna get a bit faster, yeah that's not a stable approach at all. Also, as Don't you can see, see I've uh, talked about to pull out the ground proximity of uh, alarm, alarm, and that just, Don't sink. yeah, that's the Don't sink. voice that says "Don't sink." Don't sink. Because it thinks Don't sink. I am Don't not sink. going to land because I'm Don't sink. so. Don't sink. Don't um, sink. Uh, Don't sink. Not near enough. Don't sink. The Don't runway, sink. but it looks good. We're Don't a sink. bit too high. Because we have uh, three lights on the right. Don't sink. Now two two. That's good. Don't sink. A bit too high. But I don't worry. That should work. And I'm gonna actually pull on spoilers. Yeah, there it is. Nice. Hey, that was quite a nice lighting, I would say. Not to pat my back, uh, myself on the back, but I think it was quite good. So turn next taxiway, of course. So we landed in Paris. Very nice. We're gonna turn on this taxiway. So I'm just controlling the airplane with my rudder pedals right now. Those control the front wheel to drive it like three wheeler. Yeah. So we're gonna change frequency to the ground frequency actually. Yeah, there it is. Then we're gonna ask for gate. Taxi to gates. There it is. Oh god. I'm so happy that I can, like, turn on the rest of taxi. Or else I'm gonna. I uh, would have a problem. Alright, we gotta wait until we can acknowledge the taxi fans. So yeah, the rudder pedals still turn the front wheel, but also the rudder on back. For if we want to go left or right without banking. There it is, progressive taxi. Hello? Progressive taxi? Uh oh. Ah, there it is. Wait, it's gone. Okay. That's strange. I'm just gonna follow. Wait, why does it disappear? Whoa, 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 whoa. Cool. I should probably watch out where I'm going. Yeah? I just want to look. Yeah, alright, we're gonna cross here. That's good. We can do that. 
on. Ah, there it is. Now we can see. That's strange. So as I said, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator X, um, has a lot of errors, actually. So, Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. Continue that. <laughs> um, he just said we should hold position, but he said it, you know, because the run where we just crossed was actually in use. But he said it like when we were actually on the runway already, so I just kept taxi. So yeah, I really can't wait for the new Microsoft Flight Simulator because of all the improvements. And I know there are like other flight simulators who are way better than FSX, like X-Plane or something, or P3D, but I just started with FSX because I heard it was kinda easy and then I didn't really change and then I was about to change to X-Plane and then like E3 came along and Microsoft Flight Simulator got a... there was like a new version well you... I guess you know it uh, when they actually talked about the new simulator Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, I think it's called. And I'm not sure where to text it. Did he say G? I think he said G. Wait, hold on. No, no, we're gonna use the, this one. Alright, GE12. Sure, why not? So, yeah, we actually landed. It was pretty good landing, I would say. Unlike last time when I just practically, uh, practically totaled the aircraft. You can't use it after that. Like uh, 500 feet uh, runway overrun. Because I kept the engines right. <laughs> also, once again, if you have any questions or something, you can just write in the in the chat. I'll see it. I have a dope right next to me. Actually quite fast right now. 40 knots, that's a bit too fast. Normally you go like 30 knots when you're taxiing on the ground. Or of course slower. And now where do we have to Just follow here. I always thought about uh, that it would be like so, a fun challenge or something to just pick out two airports and then instead of flying from one airport to the other, you just drive over the highway you have in the game. Or taxi over the runway, you know. That'd be quite funny, I think. But then we would, uh, one would need like better highway Landmark physics. No, they're not called physics, but you know, more cars, more um, building sites or something. So you have to. A real simulation of highways, how you have them in real life. Whoa, 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 whoa. Alright. I'm still taxing X way too fast. But it works, so... I'm not complaining. Well, maybe the passengers are, but the door is shut. I can't hear them. All right. I'm gonna 
turn left here. Also, always I'm, uh, when I'm turning, I'm applying brakes on the side I want to turn on, so that it's actually so that I can actually turn better. Uh, come on. Yeah, a bit more, a bit more, a bit more. Uh. Yeah, yeah, that's worth maybe a bit more. I'm a perfectionist, I can't tell. There it is! So actually, we can uh, also uh, pull into flaps again. Just this lever. Uh, yeah. There they go. And back to there. So yeah, here we are, and I'll turn off the engines, and then we can open the door, and the baggage uh, door hopper, I don't know what's called, like that, yeah, there it is, and now the baggage truck can take out the baggage and the passengers can get out of the main door. Very nice. Well, there's a graphic error. <laughs> so yeah, and just for... Actually, it just gave me a master caution because uh, the generator failed, but I can turn them off. And the battery master then everything will turn black because I'll turn off all the screens and you know just the battery so it won't have uh, electricity anymore. Also, seatbelt signs. All right, there we are. That uh, dark and cold. So and. I don't think that's how you unload the baggage, but he's trying his best. So yeah, here we are. We flew from Bern to Paris, and we yeah one hour one hour and a quarter one and a quarter hours. Uh, I think that's quite good for stream right now. So I hope you enjoyed it. I still have to uh, pull in. Underneath the stream, you should see the poll. Uh, if I should use background music or something, or you can also if, write if you want to say something, you can always write it into the chat because I'll have it open when I'm streaming. So, I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, have a nice day. Also, what I just forgot is you can uh, follow me on Twitter. I'll ra uh, or I'll tweet out when I'm gonna when I'm actually gonna stream. It's it's quite a quite a strange Twitter name actually. Well, it's it's, it's really stupid actually. Uh, it's at Pelican 043083306. Yeah, it's a lot of numbers, but uh, I think I wrote it down in my bio of the Twitch channel and also my YouTube channel. Uh, the YouTube channel is, uh, is also Pelicano, and I'll um, like upload the uh, the stream as a recording on there. So I think I've said everything that I wanted to say, and yeah, now I'm really done. So goodbye and have a nice day.